In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about SSH and how to use it as a web developer. Towards the end of the tutorial, we'll look at some real examples of connecting to servers via SSH, so keep watching to see how you can make use of SSH for your projects. SSH provides a secure connection to another computer, typically a server, to perform tasks like remotely executing shell commands. You might want to see how much disk space is on a server or install a new service or app. You can use SSH to log into the remote machine and run pretty much any command you need to. The problem with connecting to a remote machine over the internet is that your data will pass through many networks, some of which could be unsecured and have malicious programs or users listening for interesting requests. For example, if you were trying to run a command on a remote server from your local computer over the internet, your transmission could be intercepted, viewed and possibly modified before it reached its intended target. SSH prevents this by creating a secure connection between the two devices where you can safely send requests to run commands on the remote server. SSH can also be used to secure any type of network resource, for example HTTP or FTP, and we'll take a look at some examples at the end of this video. Generally, you would set up an SSH connection in the terminal or command prompt, and you'll need to have both SSH server software running on the remote machine and also an SSH client on your local machine to make a connection. This is something that's generally configured on new servers when they're set up, otherwise it'd be difficult to administer them, and Mac and Linux computers will have an SSH client installed already. For Windows users, either using a Unix-like command prompt like git bash or the Windows subsystem can provide command line access, or you can use the putty client to manage connections. To make an SSH connection, you need to know at least two things, the server host and the username that you wish to connect to the remote server as. The server host can either be an IP address or domain name, the username will be the user on the remote server that you're connecting to, not the user on your local computer. You'll also need some way of authenticating yourself to the remote server, which can either be a password or a key. We'll look at keys in a moment, but first let's make a connection to a remote server with a password. I'm going to connect to a remote server I have set up with DigitalOcean. First, I'll type in SSH James at 142.93.58.60, where James is my username on the remote server and the IP address is the server host. I'll then be prompted for a password which is hidden on the command line, so it needs to be typed in carefully. You might see a warning message asking you to accept the server's fingerprint, its identity, so type yes if you trust the resource that you are trying to connect to. If the username and password are correct, you'll see the welcome message of the server and can happily execute any remote commands that my user is permitted to on the server. Let's try that again with a domain name instead. This time I'll type SSH James at server.juniordevelopercentral.com. So now I'm using server.juniordevelopercentral.com as the server host. Again, I'll enter the password for this user, and once the SSH connection is established, I can then run commands. The other way to make an SSH connection is to use a key to prove you are authorised to access a server. This way the server doesn't need to request a password when you connect, which is useful if you're setting up your SSH connection in a script or a continuous integration workflow. You can see your SSH keys in the hidden SSH folder of your local computer's home directory. The key consists of two parts, the public key and the private key. The private key stays on your local computer and the public key can be provided to other resources, such as a remote server you want to connect to, to verify that the connections you create are from you. If you don't have any keys, you can create a new one with the SSH keygen command, specifying a name for the key and local password to use if required. To provide your public key to a remote server, use the SSH copy ID command with a username and server, which will then copy your public key. Once the server has your public key, you can create an SSH connection in the same way as before, but this time you won't be prompted for a password unless you created one for the key with the SSH keygen command. Probably the most common other use of SSH for web developers is to copy your project files from your local computer to a remote server. There are several ways you can do this, including using the SCP command, short for secure copy, which takes your local files and securely copies them to a remote server. You can also specify the folder on the remote server the files are copied to.
By doing this, the files are transferred from the local computer, and if you have configured a web server on the remote machine, your project will be publicly visible. SCP, however, is marked as being outdated by the OpenSSH organization, so alternative tools like SFTP and rsync are available to help move files between clients and servers. Using any of these methods allows you to publish your content to your remote server. In summary, SSH, or more specifically connecting to remote servers with SSH, is an incredibly useful tool to help you administer the resources that host your websites and apps. You can also use it to transfer your local web development project to a remote server once it's ready to be published. For more information about SSH and how you can use it as a web developer, check out some of the links in the description below.